The world's largest new CO2 heat pump in Denmark is supplying two entire cities with heat. What's special about it is that it uses seawater as its heat source. And other countries want to catch up. A similar power plant is planned to go into operation in Flensburg by 2027. It is intended to heat 20% of the city and could replace 6,000 individual heat pumps for single-family households. But should countries really rely on seawater heat pumps or are heat pumps working with, for example, river water the better choice? And how much is the water temperature change by this technology? That's what we're gonna talk about today. And with that, welcome to the German Science Guy. I'm Dr. Jakob Botton and in Germany we say Los geht's. The principle of the heat pump, which generates heating from environmental heat and electricity, is already in use in many households. Heat pumps are used in 76.3% of new residential buildings in Germany and in the US already 12.6% of buildings use a heat pump and around 45% of new buildings use it as their primary heat source. Maybe some of you already have a heat pump at home and maybe you can share your experience with it in the comments and also if it's a more positive or more negative experience. But put simply, heat pumps extract heat from the surrounding air, ground or water and convert it into usable heating energy. The key advantage lies in their efficiency at converting energy. They can generate up to 5 kilowatt hours of heat from 1 kilowatt hour of electricity. However, how efficient such a pump truly is depends on many factors including the construction and insulation of the house as well as the location of the pump. And that's why the decentralized heat pump, so the individual heat pump at home, is not the best solution for all locations. In urban areas, for instance, there can sometimes be space problems. There are various regulations for installation such as minimum distance to other properties and the noise pollution that can arise from unfavorable installation also comes into play. This makes large scale heat pumps all the more interesting. The heat generated by such heat pumps is distributed to nearby households through district heating networks. While Germany does have some of these networks in place, the heat is still primarily generated by large power plants that burn natural gas, oil or coal. At present, only 15.2% of households are connected to district heating and only 20% of that comes from renewable sources. For comparison, in Denmark it's already 63% of households and up to 75% of the heat comes from renewable energy. The advantage of a large-scale power plant is clear. You have one large plant that supplies entire city districts, while households only need one system to receive and distribute the heat internally. Looking ahead, Germany intends to make its heat supply less dependent on fossil fuels by expanding sustainable district heating networks. The shift also aims to stabilize prices, at least that's a promise. Experts see the greatest potential for this transition in large-scale heat pumps. So let's take a quick look at how they actually work. Large-scale heat pumps operate using three interconnected circuits that enable heat exchange. The first circuit draws thermal energy from a heat source, for example the surrounding air, the ground or water from rivers or the sea, and transfers this energy to the second circuit. Instead of water, this one contains a refrigerant with a low boiling point. Refrigerant might be confusing here, but it simply refers to a substance that evaporates quickly, so quickly that it's already a gas at room temperature. In a component called the evaporator, the refrigerant absorbs heat and evaporates. This gas then enters the compressor where it is pressurized. And as pressure increases, so does temperature. And this high temperature heat can then be used for heating purposes. The hot gas then flows into the condenser where the second circuit meets the third one. Here it transfers its heat to the water used in the district heating. As a result, the refrigerant cools down and is routed through an expansion valve where its pressure drops again. Then it can absorb energy from the external heat source again, allowing the cycle to repeat itself. This process is what enables heat pumps to operate so efficiently. And large-scale heat pumps can also capture heat from wastewater, industry, data centers or waste burning plants. A major advantage is that district heating networks can, in theory, combine multiple heat sources simultaneously. Another key benefit, the original heat source doesn't need to be particularly hot to generate high temperatures for residential heating, because that's the power of the compression cycle. 
Germany is already making use of a variety of heat sources for large scale heat pumps and new projects are being launched or planned. So let's take a look at the most important projects before we turn to the world's largest one. Stuttgart currently has the largest operational large scale heat pump. It uses the cooling water from a waste burning plant and is powered directly by electricity from that same burning process. It delivers a thermal output of 24 megawatts. If the plant operates 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, it produces over 210,000 megawatt hours of energy per year. An average household in 2021 needed about 15,000 kilowatt hours of energy for heating and hot water. So in theory, this pump could theoretically supply nearly 14,000 households. But big part, heating demand is not constant throughout the year. And sometimes you only really want to heat in winter. So this calculation doesn't match real world usage. Estimates vary widely, ranging from 3,500 to 10,000 households that can be supplied with a heat pump of this size. This range shows that it's not so easy to give an exact value here. The truth lies probably somewhere in the middle. In Mannheim, another large scale heat pump is used, which uses river water. It achieves a thermal output of 20 megawatts. And several more large scale projects are currently planned in Germany. A 2023 study by the Argo Energiewende estimates that by 2045, large scale heat pumps could cover up to 70% of Germany's district heating supply and with that replace a large part of natural gas. In Hamburg, Germany's first wastewater large scale heat pump is scheduled to be built in the coming years with a plant power of 60 megawatts. And in the city of Ludwigshafen, the chemical company BASF has received funding approval for the construction of the world's most powerful industrial heat pump. It will recover waste heat from a chemical plant at the site. With the help of electricity from renewable sources, CO2 free heat will be generated in this way. These are ambitious plans, but despite this progress, Germany still lags behind many other countries. And with that, it's time to take a look at the world's largest CO2 seawater heat pump. At the end of 2024, the world's largest seawater heat pump went into operation in Esbjerg on the coast of the North Sea in Denmark. It uses seawater as a heat source to generate environmentally friendly heating, a major step forward in sustainable urban energy. The system was developed and commissioned by Mann Energy Solutions, a company based in Germany. With a massive heating power of 70 megawatts, the heat pump manages to produce 280,000 megawatt hours of heating energy annually. According to the company, this is enough to supply about 25,000 households in two cities, which is really impressive. But again, a quick recalculation here, 280,000 megawatt hours of heat. If you apply the average German household heat consumption to that energy output, the number drops to around 18,000 households. And even that assumes the full annual output is used evenly, which isn't always the case, especially given seasonal heating needs. So the real world number is likely somewhat lower. But what's special about this large scale heat pump is that it uses CO2 as a refrigerant. That's still rare in heat pumps, but it's it's an important innovation because before most heat pumps worked with F gases. That's still rare in heat pumps, but it is a very important innovation because before most heat pumps worked with F gases. F gases are fluorinated gases and are commonly used in traditional heat pumps. They are extremely harmful to the climate, up to 23,500 times more damaging than CO2 if they are released into the environment, which is of course counterproductive if you are building heat pumps to protect the climate. Because of this, by 2032, heat pumps in Germany, among other countries, will no longer be allowed to contain F gases, so alternatives like CO2 are gaining attention. CO2 as an alternative has both advantages and disadvantages. CO2 heat pumps operate at higher pressure than conventional heat pumps, which requires a more robust and often more expensive design. Since the system is quite complex, the initial costs and also the maintenance costs are higher. The decisive advantage, however, is safety and environmental friendliness. That's especially critical in Denmark, since the plant is located in a sensitive ecosystem, the Wadden Sea, an UNESCO World Heritage Site. In short, the pump works like this. It was 4,000 liters of water from the north see every second, extracting about 3 degrees Celsius of heat from it. That thermal energy is then transferred to the CO2 refrigerant, causing it to turn into a gas and heat up. The CO2 is then compressed to 120 bars. This step requires a lot of electricity. But the good thing is, for every megawatt hour of electric energy it uses, it delivers about 3 megawatt hours of heating energy. So it's a really efficient system. Best 
of all, the system is powered entirely by nearby wind farms. The plant is also flexible. It can react to demand fluctuations by being switched on and off several times a day. The heat can sometimes be pre-held. That makes it a perfect partner for renewable energy, helping to balance the grid as wind and solar power fluctuates. And Germany is now taking also serious steps in this direction as well. The Flensburg Municipal Utility has commissioned a similar powerful seawater heat pump, which will use heat from the Flensburg Fjord from 2027 onwards. Once operational, the plant is expected to cover 20% of the heating demand for the city of Flensburg and two nearby communities with climate neutral heat. The plant will be installed in container-like modules right at the waterfront. At full capacity, it will draw in around 3000 liters of water per second and deliver a thermal output of 60 megawatts. That's roughly equivalent to the heating power of 6000 individual household heat pumps, consolidated into one large and more efficient system. However, there are also initial challenges. And with that, we come to the big but or the big hurdle of this video. Before that, don't forget to activate the bell and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more of my upcoming videos. First of all, it's expected that the plant will likely have to shut down about two weeks per year. This is because it can't operate under extremely cold conditions. According to some estimates, the seawater needs to stay above 8 degrees Celsius for the system to function properly. If the temperature drops below that, the heat pump has to pause, which is of course inconvenient as that is probably the day when heating is most important. That said, it is probably possible that in such cases the system could be supported by preheating, similar to hybrid systems that combine gas boilers and heat pumps like many households already use. And if we look at the broader potential of seawater-based heat pumps, there's a major limitation. Many countries simply doesn't have that much coastline. Large cities that could even consider using seawater as a heat source are relatively rare. But of course, there are other options like river water, geothermal energy or industrial waste heat. Still, for any kind of large-scale heat pump to be used efficiently, the city needs a district heating network and that's where the next big issue lies. Many cities are still far behind when it comes to district heating infrastructure. The reason why the seawater pump is planned in Flensburg is, of course, partly due to its proximity to the sea, but also because 98% of the city is connected to district heating. That's really extremely high and an exception. If you compare that with other cities in Germany, that number drops drastically. For example, Hamburg, which is also at the sea, has 16.8% share, Berlin 18.5% and Munich is actually the winner under the big cities with almost 20% but still it's not that much. And then there's another point. District heating supply is often also handled by local municipal utilities. Unlike electricity grids, the individual heating grids are not interconnected, which means that each grid must be considered separately. Therefore, every district heating supply company needs its own infrastructure. This complicates nationwide expansion. And there's also a cost factor. District heating tends to be significantly more expensive. If gas prices fall on the markets, this often doesn't immediately reach district heating customers as contracts are often long-term and price reductions are only passed on with a delay. Another challenge is electricity demand. Of course, it increases with XXL heat pumps. Although efficiency is good, you still need the electricity first and it should ideally come from renewables, otherwise it defeats the purpose. This is mostly the norm in Scandinavian countries. In other countries, however, it is not yet entirely clear where exactly this clean electricity should come from. And finally, there remains the old problem, especially in Germany, bureaucracy. In Germany, the expansion of district heating but also of the plants is primarily hampered by complex approval procedures. And I can guess this might be the same problem in other countries. Share your experience if you want so. And I also want to mention one more thing. There's another promising parallel project underway in Cologne, my hometown city. By 2027, it's set to become Europe's largest river water heat pump. The system is planned to deliver 150 megawatts of thermal output, supply around 50,000 households and save up to 100,000 tons of CO2 per year. During the process, the river does cool down a bit due to the heat pump, which actually sounds tempting at first, because according to a Swiss research group, the rivers in the alpine regions would warm up as much as 5.5 degrees in summer considering the pessimistic climate scenario. So such a heat pump could counteract with that. However, the reality is a bit less dramatic. Current estimates suggest that the water will only cool down by about a tenth of a degree. So in the end, the effect is probably not that big. And in the sea, the effect will probably be completely irrelevant. 
too bad for us. But what do you think? Will these XXL heat pumps become the norm? And does anyone here have experience with district heating at home? I always thought that at first it sounds very attractive, but then you read about the high prices and especially the lack of flexibility since you can't change providers. So it doesn't sound that good anymore. So let me know what you think about it. And with that, take care and see you soon. In Germany, we say Auf Wiedersehen. Your Jacob.